Welcome to HKB, I'm Leon. I'm Shaz, and today we're looking at a film from Imprint, Mrs. Parker and the Vicious Circle. So this film stars Jennifer Jason Lee and a whole array of stars. It's a drama and it's based on a true story. So here's our review, see what you think. New York in the roaring 20s. Cops are here, everybody speak easy. The playground of a celebrated circle of friends. You almost look like a man today, Edna. So do you, Alec. <laughs> At the center of the circle was the beautiful and irrepressible Dorothy Parker. So this is another film we've been sent from Via Vision on the imprint label. And it stars one of my favorite actresses ever, Jennifer Jason Lee. So Shaz. Read them the brief synopsis on the back of the Blu-ray. Dorothy Parker remembers the heyday of the Algonquin Round Table, a circle of friends whose barbed wit, like hers, was fueled by alcohol and flirted with despair. So that is brief, but this is actually quite a long film. Mm. It's over two hours running time, and when we first put it on, my initial thoughts were, I don't think I'm going to get into this. I'm a huge Jennifer Jason Lee fan, as you know. And the cast in this is absolutely amazing. But because there's so many big names in there, and there's so many big performances, a lot of the people get lost in the mix. But, that being said, as the story goes along and you get used to the mix of characters and all the different interlaced relationships then it does kind of draw you into that world and as a period piece drama and semi-autobiographical mm. I think it works really well I think you've got to have an interest in this type of film you've got to either want to know about Dorothy Parker you know know a bit about her and be interested to find out more about her or you've got to be a fan of Jennifer Jason Lee as I am, or just really keen on historical dramas uh, to, to get the most from this one. Mm. How about you, Shaz? How did you find this? We've just watched this. How did you feel about it? Like you, I wasn't sure if I was going to get into it. Um, I didn't really know what to expect or what it was about, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I've not actually heard of Dorothy Parker and the Algonquin Round Table before, but it sounds like around the world it might be quite well known about, about her and this table and friends. But I don't know, I did enjoy it and I felt I got really roped into Dorothy Parker and her life and that it was quite tragic, really. So I was really starting to form a, you know, a sort of sympathy for her and, uh, you know, how her life went. Um, but I did find it quite confusing. Um, lots of characters popping up here, there and everywhere, wasn't there? And trying to keep track of everything that was going on. But I mean, I guess if maybe you watch this a few times, it might, you know, become clearer. I guess so. Like you said, I think that confusion's supposed to be there a little bit because she's spouting poetry at you all the time very mm. enigmatic probably yes. I think some of the poems it said at the end they were given permission to use so yes. they used that to create that sort of mystique uh, if you like in the so, film so you mean the poems were actually written by Dorothy Parker yeah and then fitted into the film in different parts depending on what it was showing of her life yeah, whichever scene, because mm. we had like flashbacks, like it was in the uh, a more a time more forward in her own personal timeline, and she was talking about events in the yeah. past. So it was black and white in the sort of the modern day for her. Yeah. And then her flashbacks were filmed in color. Yeah, they? when when things were more vibrant. Yeah. And the group of friends were all together in that hotel, mm. and. Um, yeah, they all seem to be very frivolous, flirty, but also very toxic, as you yeah. said. You yeah. know, the relationships could be toxic because they were married and a lot of them were having affairs, mm. which it might seem strange to some people being 1920s and whatnot, 
but these characters were like that and they were having affairs and they all have repercussions you know she mm. actually for me she actually became enamored with Matthew Broderick's character Charles MacArthur mm -hmm. and that was quite sad because he obviously didn't feel the same way about yeah. her but also she had a friend that she worked with called um, Robert she called him Fred but he was another writer played by Campbell Scott and you kind of felt like he was the best match for her yeah yeah they seemed to really connect didn't they but they never went there did no. they so it's an interesting mix and you've got mm. some really unexpected people in here you've got like Jennifer Beals from Flashdance We've got Gwyneth Paltrow there, very young. We've got Heather Graham, Nick Casvetti's Andrew McCarthy from Ma Mannequin Fame, Keith Carradine, Sam Robards. You know, it's a huge cast in this. And we've got James LaGrosse. And you remember what we enjoyed him from? Remind me. I'll give you a clue. Boy! Oh, Phantasm. Yep, he was in Phantasm 2. He took over the role of Mike in number 2. Right, yes. And um, we have seen him in some other stuff, but that's mainly what we remember him mm. from. So it's good to see him in this, because this is a more high-caliber high acting role. Yes, yeah. You wouldn't think that you'd have somebody from Phantasm 2 acting in something like this. No. But you do. And you got more for Plimpton from The Goonies. And anybody who remembers... Inconceivable! Inconceivable! From The Princess Bride, <laughs> yep, Wallace Shawn's in there too. <laughs> and for all the fans of Mandalorian out there, John Favreau's in there. And we've got Stanley Tucci. So this is a, a heavily stacked cast, yeah. and I think it's a bit too heavily stacked, you know? There's too many people in there. But that, that can be a good thing, but it can be a double-edged coin where people get lost. Mm. And, um, and you're looking out for people that you've seen on the cast list and then yeah, you're yeah. distracted. Where, where are they? Where are they? We were a bit distracted. We were looking for Stanley Tucci and he only really sort of appeared near the end, didn't he? <laughs> he did, but we weren't sure whether he was playing two roles and he looked really different than another. I, I couldn't have said for I sure. I don't think so. Maybe he was just the one. It was a bit of a distraction trying to keep an eye out I for know. him, wasn't well, it? Well, maybe that's Stanley <laughs> Tucci. No, maybe this is Stanley Tucci. <laughs> And um, Cindy Lauper, I didn't really spot her, I know she was there. Yeah, she was and, in there, um, yeah. Yeah, so she had a guest spot as well. But I, I did like Jennifer Jason Lee in this. I thought the role she played, I don't know Dorothy Parker, but you feel like she's made a study. I think with so. different ways she spoke to yeah. how she normally speaks. I feel like she put her all into... You know, understanding the character and trying to portray her to the best of her ability. Absolutely. And I always love to see Matthew Broderick, and this is a, a more of an acting role for him, so that's always nice mm. to see him pushed a bit dramatically. Because most of us just think of him as very Mueller, you know, and um, <laughs> or Godzilla or whatnot. So to see him in something like this mm. is, is a bit of a pleasure. But i, I got to say, as far as recommendations go, I'm not going to shout to our usual crowd and say, hey, dash out and buy this. I would say this is a film for fans of this type of film, strictly. Yeah. But this edition from Imprint, Shaz, what do you think? Oh, it's great, isn't it? It's got a lovely slip cover. And um, there's a nice big picture on the inside as well, which is lovely. And then the, it's just completely loaded with extras. I mean, it's about two hours, isn't it? It is. Yeah, that's the um, total sum of the extras. Yeah. You know, some really lengthy ones. And let me read it out for our listeners. We have an audio commentary by director, car writer, Alan Rudolph. We have a reflection of a reflection interview with director, car writer, Alan Rudolph. We have Playing Real People, interview with actor Campbell Scott. Casting Human Complexities, interview with casting director Pam Dixon. Archival interview with director, co-writer Alan Rudolph. That's from 1994, that one. And we have an interview with the composer Mark Isham. And then we've also got quite a lengthy documentary, which is Would You Kindly Direct Me To Hell, about the infamous Dorothy Parker. As, along with a theatrical trailer and TV spot. So I really spoil you with this release. Yeah. They've 
Dark really Art. in depth, isn't it? Yeah, for a title that mm. not many people will know, I think it's a, a really good job. This is probably the definitive release of this yes, um, film. Yes, I would imagine so, yeah. Right, so, I don't have much more to say on this. I think we've, we've covered it. I liked the cast. I had a lot of fun with mm. the film. It was, um, yeah, they're different film to what I expected but I enjoyed it personally so I would recommend for fans of this type of film I'm the same as you I think definitely recommend for people that are into like you say historical dramas or have a specific interest in Dorothy Parker I think this would be really good for those audiences so that was our review obviously this film isn't gonna be for everybody we selected this one because I am a huge, huge Jennifer Jason Lee fan. So I, I had to request this one. Are you a Jennifer Jason Lee fan? Are you a fan of any of the stars in this film? If so, please let us know in the comments below. If you've watched this far, thank you very, very much. We do appreciate it. And if you could show your appreciation in the video by hitting that like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, Huge thank you to Via Vision and Imprint Entertainment for supplying us with this copy. We were very pleased to receive it. And we'll put purchase links in the description. So that's it for now. We'll catch you on the next one. See you then. I never thought I'd make it.